Sheikh Muhammad Nasiri's biography, Muhammad Nasiri the Almighty, may Allah have mercy upon him, was that he used to go to the Haram, the Sheikh, Mecca. And anyone who's been to the Haram will know that people don't care, they'll step over you. Yeah. Ah, to the extent some of them are women. Yeah. What are you going to do to a woman? It's a mushkila. So the Sheikh did not care who it was. <laughs> Sheikh Muhammad Nasiri did, that did not care. He would go pray in the Haram. And I believe, inshallah, we're going to study that more in details. The Haram has a different ruling. The Sutra does not apply in the Haram. Ah, does not apply in the Haram. Why? Because of it's impossible. But the Sheikh believed it's mandatory. That's why he said the general ruling is here. He's used the general ruling. He said, Lu'ubum in Nusus. Lu'ubum in Qawli Salah The Prophet's speech is general. How is it you need to take it out? Because that's what his point of view is. So the Sheikh, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, will go to the Haram and he said in his biography when he spoke about it, he said, My whole Salah will be a fight. All day I'll fight. Uh, fight. Because people don't, well, listen. Hatta akhi, you're in sujood, people will step over you. Sujood. So it's not a matter of way crossing by. So the matter the Sheikh was very, very solid with Rahimahullah. And that's how he does his love of the Sunnah. Allah, yalhamu. May Allah have mercy upon the Sheikh. So now we learn that it's mandatory to have a sutra. Brothers, these are matters you're looking at since what was minor. Wallahi, sutra is very important. And this is where Allah gives us honor and izza when the ummah follow everything that they're told to do. You see? So have a sutra when you pray. Also, the Sheikh says after that, وَيَجِبُ It is mandatory أَنْ يَدْنُوَ مِنْهَا That he gets close to it. لِأَمْرِ النَّبِي صَلَى اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ بِذَلِكِ According to the Prophet صلى what? Issue. So he gets close to it according to what? According to where he can do his sujood. So when he does his sujood, the pulpit should be, sorry, the uh, sutra, the sutra, the object that is there, his head is close to it. That's all it should be. The Prophet ﷺ's sutra and uh, the Prophet Sallallahu his sutra and himself, what was in between them both? Mumarrishat. Where a shat, a goat, can go through. That's all it was, Ali Sallallahu Very close to his sutra. How can you defend a sutra where it's over there? Ha. Are you going to run every time somebody wants to go in front of you? So if the person has to be as close so he can grab, so it should be, to be honest, a reach. The person shouldn't be able to go, he should be go around your hand when you do this. He should be able to go around your hand. He should be able to go around your hand. Naam. So go get as close as you can to your sutra. So you can defend it, of course. وَكَانَ بَيْنَ مَوْضِعِ سُجُودِهِ وَالْجِدَارَ الَّذِي يُسَلِّي إِلَيْهِ نَحْوَ مُمَرِّشَّاتِ And that's as I said, between the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's prostration and the pulpit, it used to be that shat, alayhi sallatu wasallam. فَمَنْ فَعَلَ ذَلِكَ Anyone who did that, فَقَدْ أَتَى بِالْدُّنُوِ الْوَاجِبِ Anyone who does that, he has come with the closeness that is required from him. Ha. That مُبَرِّشَّاتِ مِقْدَارُ تِفَاعُ السُدْرَ the length of the sutra. The length of how high it needs to be. وَيَجِبَ أَن تَكُونَ السُتْرَةُ The sutra should be high. So it should be a what? A book like this. On the ground. Flat book like this. On the ground. Or an imam that you... Or a shimag that you took off. Or a jacket that you took off. And you just lie it down like that. It's not sutra. The sutra has to be something that is vertical. صح? Something that is... That stands now. No, is that horizontal? This is way is this way is horizontal in it. It has to be vertical. It can't be something that's horizontal. Why ajibu? It is mandatory. And takuna sutra to murtafia that the sutra is vertical. It has to be and high. And in ardi from the ground, nahwa shibr one hand span, hand span, one hand span. Oh shibraini or two. لِقَوْلِهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ In accordance to the Prophet's speech, عليه الصلاة والسلام إِذَا وَضَعَ هَدُّكُمْ بَيْنَ يَدَيْهِ مِثْلَ مُؤْخِرَاتِ If one of you prays, places before himself a مُؤْخِرَاتِ A مُؤْخِر is what? It is the thing that when the person is on his riding beast, he leans on. That little thing, it's a little saddle, نعم, mashallah, and it's got a little thing, wooden thing that comes out of it. That thing, it reaches just above your, the, uh, where your spine would start. Or your spine starts from your bum, huh? So just in the middle of your back, basically, where your kidneys will be located at. From where you would sit. 
That's how high it would basically be. Shibrain or Shib. Shibrain, taqriba, naam. The Prophet used to have that. Ar-Rahali fal yusalli. Pray to it. Wa yuballi man marra wa ra'a dhalik. And do not have any consideration of whoever who goes around it. If the people are going around it, good. MashaAllah. If they're going inside it, it's a mushkila. What do you do? Fal tuqatilhu. Fight with him. If he tries to. Wa yatawajjahu ila sutrati mubasharatan. The person will be directed towards the sutra directly. Don't put your sutra slightly to the side. Are you with me? Don't put it. Your sutra and you are. So the qibla is there and the sutra is in between you and the qibla. The or it's in the direction towards the qibla. It's right in front of you. Because that is the apparent order that is required towards the sutra. But to place the sutra on the right, on the side, to move it to the right of the side, left or right, that is not authentically, that is not right. Uh -huh. So that's something that many people may do um, at this current time that we have. What it is permissible for salah. إلى العصا to a stick المغموزة في الأرض أو نحوها. It is permissible for a stick that a person sticks on the ground uh, and he puts it on the ground or other than it. وإلى شجرة or a tree أو استوانتي. So what's he trying to say? Something that you stuck to the ground. That's what you done it. You took a stick and you a spear or whatever and you just dug it onto the ground like that. You put it in and you play towards it. That is permissible. A stick is not going to be that thick. So the thickness of it, it really doesn't matter. It's the height that matters. The thinness of it doesn't really matter. Or a tree. And a tree is big. Or a tree. The difference between the stick and the tree is going to be what? The tree is originally from the ground in it. So it's rooted from the ground. So anything that just came out of, it's out of the ground and anything you put into the ground, no problem, it's the same. The thickness and the thinness is also not a problem. Awistiwanatistiwana means a pillar. Wa ila imratin mudajiata ala sari. Even a woman or your wife that is lying down on her bed. If a person is lying down, they are one ship. So your wife is sleeping there towards the qibla. You can use her as a sutra. And the Prophet used Aisha. So now he used Aisha to grab her leg every time he was doing sujood alayhi salatu salam. Using your wife. As a sutra, not a problem. And also a riding beast. Your, 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 your beast. You, you use him. Even if it's what? Naam. Even if it's a camel. Why would the sheikh say even if it's a camel? Are you allowed to pray in the place of the camel? It's one of the places it's prohibited to pray in the toilet, the house, the place where the camel stays. Huh? So the Sheikh is saying that may some people may think that if the camel is not in that place, he's outside on the tree, it may not be permissible to pray, use the camel as a sutra. It's, it's just the place that's prohibited, not the camel. Can, can, can you only use your wife in the sutra if she's on the bed? No, nah, if she's on the floor, she's lying down, you can use her now. Nah. You can use her back as a sutra, you can see she's lying down or she's sleeping somewhere. Or, nah, you can say, just can you stay here, I need to pray towards you, towards the sutra, use, use the sutra. Don't, don't run after the sutra. <laughs> don't run after. <laughs> nah, it's true, some people they do is the sutra is going. Yeah, <laughs> nah, we finished that. Tahrimu salati ila al the prohibition of the salah towards a grave. Wala tajuzu, it is not permissible. As salah. To pray a prayer, to pray a salah. In al qubori towards the direction of a grave. Mutlaqan whatsoever. Sawa'an kanat qabura lil anbiya or ghairim. Whether that qabr is a prophet or other than them. Doesn't matter how holy this person is. And the Prophet has made so much effort. Five days before he died, you can imagine a person in the last moments of his life, he talks about the most dangerous things. And Allah mentions Surah Al-Nuh, وَقَالُوا لَا تَقِذُونَ And uh, uh, Surah Al-Nuh, Allah says subhanahu wa ta'ala, وقالوا لا تذرون آلهتكم ولا تذرون ودا ولا سواعا ولا يغوث ويعوق ونصرا. There were five righteous men and they were what? They were worshipped. 
So it's these tamathil and these people being on it highly too much, take it out of proportion, is one of the mashakil. So it's not permissible to pray towards the qibla, uh, sorry, the qubur at all, whether it's a prophet's grave or other than that. Tahrimu the prohibition, al mururu bayna yaday al musalli walau fil masjid al harami. Ha, now the shit goes into it. He says, he says the prohibition of crossing a person who is praying, even if it's in the haram. Ha. Even if it's inside the haram. He mentions that. Wala yajuz, it is not permissible. Al mururu bayna yaday al musalli. To go by and cross by and go in front of the person who is praying. Ida kana bayna yaday his sutra. It's not permissible for a person to go in front of a person who is praying if there is a sutra before him, in front of him. Wala farqa, and there's no difference. في ذلك إن متى بين المسجد الحرامي إن إن مكة وغيره من المساجد على other than those that مسجد doesn't matter whether it's مكة مدينة or anywhere it doesn't matter فكلها all of them سواء في عدم الجواز لعموم قول صلى الله عليه وسلم all of them are under the the uh, all of them are what that it, under the prohibition any مسجد they all fall under the prohibition because of the general statement of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم which he said لو يعلم المار if the one that was going by was to know بين يدي المصلي in front of the one he is pray, that is praying that he wants to go in front of ماذا عليه the sin that he comes back with لكان أن يقف it would have been more beloved to him to stand for 40 خيرا 40 it would be more beloved to him خيرا له من أن يمر, أن يمر بين يديه for him to cross in front of a person he would prefer to spend 40 to sp spend 40 then for him to park, go in front of a person um, uh, uh, praying salah so the 40 here is it days is it months is it years uh, it's khilaf salah but even if we take this minimum which is what 40 days 40 days or 40 salahs or 40 years it is something very not, not easy so it's big that the person does this naam وجوب منع المصلي للمار بين يديه ولو في المسجد الحرامي. Not allowing a person, I'm stopping a person who's trying to go in front of you, even if it's in the haram. You see, even if it's in the haram. ولا يجوز للمصلي. It is not permissible for a person who's praying. إلى السطرة تسع أن يد أحد يمر بين يديه. That he allows anyone to go in front of him. It is not permissible for a person who is praying to a sutra that he allows any person to go in front of him. Why? Lil hadith is sabiqi because of the hadith that just went by. Wala tada ahad al yamur bayna yadayk. The Prophet said, Do not let anyone go in front of you. Ha. The hadith. Wa qawlu sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ida salla ahadukum. If one of you prays, Ila shayin yasturu. If one of you prays towards something that is his sutra, min al nasi from a people, fa arada ahadun and one chooses, an yajtaza bayna yaday, that he wants to go in front of you, fal yadfa' fi nahrihi. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Push him from his neck, his throat. And try to push him as much as he's able to. And another narrative, what did the Prophet said? Let him, let him not. The Prophet said twice. Stop him, stop him. Do not let him. If he refuses, let him fight him. That person is a shaytan himself. Walking forward in the salah. To walk forward. To not let anyone cross you. Ah. You push this person, you push them, you f push them so bad, Masha, they still come in again. He just doesn't get it. So what do you do now do? Or the person is coming with a full speed, you can see them running, and you know that they're going to go in front of you. It happened to the Prophet when the sheep ran, came running fast, and the Prophet saw it, Ali said, coming. Uh, he saw it coming, what do you do? You run to your sutra. So he goes behind you. The Prophet did that, ويجوز, it is permissible The person to take steps One or two steps In his salah Because this person that is running to you Is not burdened They're not sitting for crossing you It's like an animal It's not burdened Such as a riding beast Or a child So that child can go behind you a child's running, he's not burdened, he's a child, he's not going to be held a cat for. He doesn't fall under the 40 that we mentioned. But you still have to take the responsibility of stopping him. 
That is your job. Even the child. Naam. The person has to run to his sutra. But if the child is playing on you, it's a different ruling. Nah. If he's playing on you, and it involves that the child's going to cross you. Uh, if he's playing like the Prophet did. Like, and he's crossing you by like that. The Prophet would refuse him. Would, would, would run in front of his sutra if anything tried to go in front of him. Nah, you can pick the child up, you can put him in front of you, you can carry a child in the salah. Um, anything that's going to cut, anything that's going to cut the, the salah, anything that's going to cut the salah, anything that's going to disconnect the salah. The importance of the pillar, uh, sorry, the sutra for the salah, and that the hulu that it, it barricades or blocks al musalli the prayer, the one that's praying, and the words that I want to go in front of him. Wabayna and also if the salati the destruction of his salah. One of the job the things that the sutra does is that it blocks you, the prayer, the one that's praying, and anyone trying to tamper with your salah, it, the sutra helps you from it, and protects you from them. Some people who harm your salah, and he will mention what it means. Bil mururi by going in front of you. Opposite to the one that doesn't even take it. The one that doesn't take the sutra, these things will nullify his salah, nullify his salah. Remember, there are those who can nullify your salah if there's no sutra and they go in front of your sutra. The salah will just go. These ones, if you have a sutra and they go around the sutra, the sutra has protected you from anyone to be able to harm your salah. فَإِنَّهُ يَقْطَعُ صَلَاتَهُ إِذَا مَرَّتْ بَيْنَ يَدَيْهِ If a person, a woman goes in front of him, الْبَارِغَةِ That has reached age of puberty. If she goes in front of you, the salah will be disconnected. وَكَذَلِكَ الْحِمَارُ And also the donkey. وَالْكَلْبُ الْأَسْوَدِ And also the black, the black dog. Naam. And also the black dog. Those three, when they come into the salah, what will they do to you? Your salah does not. The girl, like she has to be what? الْبَارِغَةِ حَيُضْ She reached age of puberty. Menstrual cycle. A little girl, no, no problem. If she goes in front of the sutra is when she nullifies your salah. But if she goes around the sutra, she can. Around your sutra, not a problem. But if she goes in front of you, ha, in front of your, your sutra, your salah is void, doesn't exist. That salah is not accepted. The same is the donkey. And the same is the... Aisha refused this hadith. She said, how? Men, women, donkey, and black, dog? She refused it. But she didn't refuse it because the Prophet ﷺ did not, she wasn't mocking that the fact that the Prophet ﷺ said this and she, like, how can he put us like this? That's not what she was refusing. The authenticity of the Prophet having to have said this. She rejected it. But for us, have, has the authenticity reached us? We take it. Can't question it. How, how dare you say this? Ah. How dare you say this? Amniya <laughs> to intention. So we've mentioned. Um, the standing and we also have mentioned the sutra we've mentioned the salah with shoes praying on the plane and ship combining between standing and sitting um, uh, and other things like that now we're going to go on to the third chapter and near to intention wala buddha and it's necessary للمصلي, the one that is praying من أن ينوي للصلاة التي قام إليها that he intends for the prayer in which he stands for وتعيينها and that he specifies it بقلبه in his heart كفرض الظهر أو العصر such as the mandatory prayer ظهر and عصر أو سنتهما مثلا or if it's the sunnah of any one of them وَهُوَ شَرْطٌ It is a condition. أو ركن Or it's a pillar, the intention. وَأَمَّا التَّلَفُّضُ As for the utterance of the intention with your tongue, بِهَا بِلِسَانِ فَبِدْعَةِ It's an innovation. مُخَالِفَةِ That opposes. 
للسنتي it opposes the sunnah ولم يقل بها أحد no one has ever said it من متبوعي المقلدين من الأئمة from the rightly guided four خلفاء الراشدين four خلفاء uh, sorry from the four أئمة أبو حنيفة الإمام مالك الإمام الشافعي الإمام أحمد and other than them no one has ever said it the intention to be pronounced loudly none of them have ever said it so here the Shaykh is talking about the importance of the intention the intention has to be said in the heart the person has to distinguish between the salahs so remember if it's a dhuhr and it's a asr you have to distinguish between the two if it's a mandatory prayer and it's a highly recommended prayer then you have to distinguish between the ruling as well all of this takes place in where? in your heart the shaykh did mention whether it's a condition or it's a pillar both of them are present at takbir takbir of the salah to say Allahu Akbar is a takbir after he intends the salah so the shaykh is walking us through the holes so you you face towards the qibla huh? you face towards the qibla you've stood up now you face the qibla you've stood up you came with the intention in your heart now you're gonna open the salah so he's walking you through it until you finish the salah each point like that and niya to we finished it at takbir the saying of Allahu Akbar ثم after that يستفتح الصلاة your individual opens the salah بقوله by saying الله أكبر وهو ركن it's a pillar لقوله صلى الله عليه وسلم and it's a pillar and the evidence for that is the speech of the messenger مفتاح الصلاة الطهور the key to the salah is purification وتحريمها and for it to become haram from you to do any actions or anything it becomes haram from you to do anything you just want to do by speech and action by what? at takbir by saying Allahu Akbar speech becomes haram from you having a conversation with your friends going to wherever you want to just walking around all of these become impermissible from you actions become impermissible from you وَالتَّحْلِيلُهَا and for those actions to be permitted for you now is at taslimu by leaving the salah leaving the salah by saying assalamu alaikum and assalamu alaikum things become permissible for you that was prohibited from you so the prophet said miftahu salat al tahur the key to the salah is purification the prohibition is by saying allahu akbar the permission the permissibility na, it's after saying assalamu alaikum uh, assalamu alaikum wala yarfa'u sawtahu the person will not raise their voice بِالتَّكْبِيرِ with the takbir في كل صلاة in every prayer إلا إذا كان إماما unless he's an imam ha. a man comes into the salah right at the back and he says Allahu Akbar and the people think the imam said it and they just go to the court people have seen that happen ah. why would you even raise your voice who told you to raise your voice say Allahu Akbar ah. you don't raise your voice who's the one that raises his voice when he says the imam the imam is the one that says Allahu Akbar and everyone as for you, no. وَلَا يَرْفَعُ صَوْتَهُ The person doesn't raise their voice with the Allahu Akbar in every rak'ah. No. Except if he's what? An imam. Except if he's a imam. So the person says, Allahu Akbar. According to how much he needs. نعم. وَيَجُوزُ تَبْلِيغُ الْمُؤَذِّنِ تَكْبِيرَ الْإِيمَامِ إِلَى النَّاسِ وَيَجُوزُ It is permissible. تَبْلِيغُ the, con the conveying of the Mu'addin Takbir al-Imami To convey the Takbir of the Imam to the people So the Imam goes Allahu Akbar This person is also the Mu'addin is allowed to say Allahu Akbar To convey it to the people so that it can reach them Because they weren't micro speak were microphones There wasn't that microphone So he's allowed Can everyone just do it? The Mu'addin should do it So it doesn't become a folder Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar Everyone just saying it once the Mu'addin is the one that does it. So he, the Imam says, Allahu Akbar. The Mu'addin says, Allahu Akbar. إِذَا وُجِدَ الْمُقْتَضَى لذلك. That is, if the need is there. كَمَرَضِ الْإِمَامِ Or the Imam is ill. Even if he uses the microphone, he's ill. 
Ha, he's Allahu Akbar. He's ill. His voice is not clear. Wada'fi sawtin. His voice is very weak. Or kathratil musallina khalfahu. Or the people that are praying behind him are too much in number. So it's not just the fact that the microphone is not there. Sometimes without the microphone, the imam can't be heard. So it shouldn't be uh, shouted out. If the imam, if it passes on and it dies out on a particular point, the ones that can just hear the fading out, they carry on as well. Naam. The haram is the number. The haram is the? It's the number. The first, the first sound is not very hard, as clear as the, the second one. And sometimes people think, did I hear the other? Did I hear? Did, did he just say it? Did, was that the Imam that just said Allahu Akbar? Some people say that to themselves. But then the Mu'addin says it, it's clear. It becomes clear that it was the, the, the Imam.